The Gauteng Sport, Arts and Culture and Recreation Department is rubbishing allegations of maladministration of funds intended to aid artists and athletes. In a statement, the DA said the department paid service to providers BASA and the GCS, or GSC rather, over 16 million rands to administer COVID-19 relief funds. But it seems the opposition party got the numbers wrong. MEC Mbali Hlope joins me now to clarify these allegations. MEC, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. I know you are being load shed, so you can't speak to us via video, but we do have your audio. First, give me the number. How much did you pay these administrators to disperse the funds? So how the numbers calculated that it's 10% of whatever they disperse. So essentially what that means is that, and where the membership and I love the DA would have made the confusion, is that we gave them initially, because there were a number of phases, and I'll come to that. So in the first phase, we gave them 16.5 million out of which they had to pay for 2201 beneficiaries it came up to 13.2 uh, give or take mm -hmm. so there was 13 uh, 13 million point two that the, would have come out of that 16.5 right and when you calculate that, that what they would have then taken as their 10 percent you'll then realize that there would have been some money that would have been left over but we had said to them they must keep that and hold on to it whilst we finalize the second process which is to deal with the appeals so the first phase covers 2201 beneficiaries and this is across both sports and arts and the second phase because we then had to do a second phase to take the appeals for individuals who for example would have been denied in the first phase because they didn't have uh, an id attached an id copy attached or it wasn't certified or there's something wrong with the documentation and so forth so those are the people that we had to listen to because we didn't really we didn't want to deprive any of these individuals from being able to get this funding that they saw required purely on the basis that they didn't have some documentation or it wasn't certified and so forth so that is why we had that second phase and we're then able to add in another just over just close to 780 individuals in the second phase that we're able to add on mm. what it came up to as the final amount that we gave to be paid to the individuals by the two entities, because you'll remember that the Gauteng Sports Council deals with the sports individuals, yeah. while BASA deals with those in the arts. So the final amount was 17.9. And out of that, you then calculate what 10% of 17.9 is. So where the member got it confused was to assume that the entities were paid 16.5 to disperse 13.2 million which really doesn't make sense and it would have helped if you could have just asked for clarity before creating this frenzy this that's unnecessary so they basically got 1.7 million right for themselves from that total amount of money that you discussed yes. they would have taken 10 percent yeah so that some would argue even mec is a lot of money because it could have went to artists in need of help why couldn't your department manage this process itself and thank you for asking me that because I think that's a very uh, good question so that we're able to provide the information to individuals. Now, here's the difficulty that we have. One, COVID, everybody is hit by COVID and departments need to find ways to respond. That is the one. But two, part of the challenges that we had from a process point of view is that if we had to pay directly to the individuals, it would have meant that we must create personal numbers for them. So for those who are not in government would not would know that when you become an employee of government, you're given a personal number. So it's your unique number, so to say. It's almost like your unique ID number that you this is your personal number and you're a government member. And that's what you get paid from on a monthly basis, which is what your salary would go through. So we can't do that with these individuals because it's a once off payment. It's a relief fund. Mm. So that is why we couldn't internally be able to, to do that. And so what we worked with with Treasury was that we needed to look at the bodies. We had two options, either to find a private sector, com a, a private company to do this work on our behalf or work with the bodies that are within the sectors that we work with. So it was only natural that we should work with the Gauteng uh, Sports Council and also work with BASA because these are umbrella bodies in any case whose mandate is development and is to cater to the interests and the needs of the individuals within sports and the individuals within arts. But two, and because we're working with individuals that are already within the sector, we could negotiate that reduced amount of 10 of 10 percent. It sounds like it's a lot to individuals, <laughs> but let me indicate what then that entails. If you are an entity 
and you have to do this work of one from an administrative point of view dealing with 3,000 application forms their management and so forth that's the administrative aspect but two because they're doing transactions two individuals of 6,000 each it means that they're going to absorb the cost the bank charges yeah. of that disbursement so that 10 percent essentially covers that so it sounds like it, it's a lot but when you have an appreciation of the work that they have to do and some of the implications of taking on that work you're then able to understand why we were had to then set aside that amount to be able to cover so that they can absorb the some of the implications that lie with them doing this work you of course would have many artists and athletes who were turned away the applications were rejected for assistance who would say that you could have better used this money 10 percent might not sound uh, much to you but of course to us who's sitting here looking at this unfold it is because if an agent had present had to represent me shahan ramkisun they would generally take 10 percent of whatever they make for me to mc or for, for whatever right but you're talking about thousands of people in need sports individuals artists who are struggling during COVID-19 as well. So is there no way you could have negotiated better here? Because 10% in that regard seems steep. It sounds steep, but like I indicate, I mean, the difficulty is that if in an ideal situation, if we were able to do this work on our, on, as a department on our own, we would have done so. But like I indicate, the challenges that we would have had with trying to bring in individuals and create these personal numbers for them when it's a once-off payment. So we couldn't do that. And that's why we really had to then look to a third party and work with these bodies that are within the sectors themselves. And like you, I mean, like you correctly say it, I mean, it is an issue of uh, perception of where you're sitting from. It does sound like it's a lot, but if you look at the, the total amount that was paid up and that it is only 10%, that is what we had to, to then pay them. We couldn't negotiate um, fit below that because had we gone for a private sector part, uh, partner or any just any ordinary PTY and so forth, they would have charged us far more mm. for that. So the 10% really is not that much. And I, and, and I say that um, mindful that it does sound like it's a lot, but as I indicate in the background, the context that I've given to why we had to utilize the third, uh, the third parties and also the work that they had to do and that we opted for individuals within the sector so that we avoid having to deal with any PTYs or private sector companies which would have charged us far more than that. And all proper processes were followed in, or in, in, in deciding on who you would get to do this? Absolutely and I must indicate this, you'll know that um, the province had to deal with a huge PPE scandal and mm -hmm. one of the things that the Premier had made sure was uh, at least to inform us was that everything must be above board. That's why we had to work very closely with our treasury in the province and also work with the Gauteng audit services. And that's why we had to phase it because we really had to be to scrutinize all documentation that was given because we understand that these are public funds. If anybody gets paid, we must be able to justify why they were given those funds. Are they an artist? Are they not an artist? Do we have all the relevant documentation that's in place and so forth? Also mindful that, remember, National was dealing with those that are your bigger artists. So they were dealing with the bigger amounts and so forth. We really focused on your community individuals. Mm -hmm. And the risk that we, we took, mindful that these are individuals that needed the help the most. And I'm not saying artists at whatever level they are at don't need the help. But because we're focusing at that level of individuals who train your community soccer teams, who train choirs, who do netball, et cetera, et cetera. We're dealing with these individuals. We needed a lot of documentation on from them that indicates that they really are in the sector. Are they artists? Are they um, the people that they claim they do? Do they do the work that they do? So we really needed to be thorough with the process. And that is why we had to work quite closely with our housing audit services to ensure that we do that. And, that, and hence, our work was phased so that we could be able to cover because uh, the different yeah. phases, the appeals and so forth that goes with it, because trying to do it all at once would have yeah, been subjected to all sorts of risks and it's just something that we couldn't have done. All right, thank you so much for clarifying that for us. Appreciate your time. Gauteng Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation, MEC, Mbali Klope.